I was um I was on the phone with a buddy of mine. Do you happen to know this guy named Drexel? No, I can't I honestly can't say that I do. Oh, you know what? What'd you say? I said I honestly can't say that I do. The name doesn't sound familiar. Okay, okay, okay. He's a big guy in uh in LA that fights for black contractors. Is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But he makes a lot of noise. <laughs> well, that's good, man. We need people fighting for us because that's that's part of what are the problem. That's what we don't have. That's true. Very much true, man. Hey, hold up, man. How was the conference, man? What's going on with my mouse here? Oh, I'm tripping. Uh man, you know what? It it uh it was fun. You know, I had a lot of fun, man. I, I, I networked a lot, man. Met a lot of powerful black women in business, brother. It was like, wow, just to sit there and, and, and look out into the audience and see nothing but women who are uh, starting their business, who, who have been in business for years, who are uh, inspiring younger women to start their business, man. That's why I, I made sure with my daughter, I'm like, look, you come with me to this event. Wow. You know, so you can see other women in business doing their thing, man. And it was, it was truly inspiration. I was nervous, man. My heart was beating out my chest. Uh, but, 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 but in the end, I guess it was good, you know, because a lot of uh, a lot of them thanked me for the information. There was some things that they said they didn't know. No one has ever told them. So I'm just glad I was able to impart some 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 money saving wisdom to those women in business, man. Because you know, if if we don't know what we supposed to know we can get shut down and then there goes our lifestyle you know what i'm saying right right I'm oh, hold on to be able to hold on real quick hold on go ahead boss <clears throat> yeah no you're right about that man you're right about that um that's awesome man that is did yeah you, did, yeah, you, did so. you record it my wife did. My wife did. She did get some video on it, man. I haven't had a chance to look at it because I didn't want to look at it and critique myself, you know, so right. I'm just, it's, it's there. <laughs> well, you know, um, one time in San Diego, man, I spoke at the Women in Construction Coalition. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Trying to get uh, more women um, to get their license. That's what I spoke on, you know. Trying okay. to get more women to get their contractor's license. But uh, it was women in construction. Yeah. Yeah, man. Women are coming up in the world today. They, they man, if I'm, oh, that's a whole conversation within itself. Like, if, if we as men don't don't step our game up, the role is going to be reversed. Because yeah. these women yeah. is out here doing it, man. And my the brothers, they just, I don't know. I really I seen, don't know. They, I've seen a few interviews you did with some women. Um an uh, interview you did with a woman in, uh, man, what? She was in, um, not so much tax. Uh, she was in. Oh, the one I did with uh, Keila from Little Fisher County. She was like, County. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah man, I, I enjoyed that one. She actually broke, broke, broke down some good information as far as tracking and the need for accounting and the purpose of it. Yeah, so, uh, that's, again, that's some things that we really don't know. We think of taxes as a once a year thing, and it's like no, it's three sixty five, same as everything else. Right, right, right. Yeah, that that was that one was a good one, man. That one was a good yeah. one. All I right, definitely enjoyed that. Well, I'm glad you could join us on here. Um, so tell me a little bit about you, Tyrone. What you do, your company? Well, uh, about me. <laughs> Obviously, you know what's what's amazing. My name is actually Tyrone Gregory, so I'm I'm, I'm here <laughs> with Tyrone, right? You know, saying two Tyrones here yeah, doing an interview man. together. Man, I, I I think we're getting ready to break the internet right now, right? <laughs> two Tyrones doing it right here, right now. Uh, but but about me, man. Um, I I like to consider myself, you know, just 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 a regular guy. Uh, I'm a husband. Uh, a father, man, been been married. Uh, let's say I've, I've been happily married for about a week now, uh, but been with my wife over fourteen years. Oh, um, you know, y'all 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 to catch that later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> father of, of 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 three amazing children, man. You know, they they actually the ones who who inspired me to really do what I do here to keep me going. 
um, you know, I'm, I'm a brother, uh, uh, uncle cousin. That's why. That's why I get the name from everybody's favorite uncle cousin, man. Because I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just that individual in, in in a whole lot of people's lives, man. But I, but I, but I enjoy it. Um, obviously, my now my profession is taxation, but I emphasize as far as taxation and small business. But I didn't, I didn't always. I, to be honest, how can I say this, man? I never would have thought that this would have been my career path. I never would have thought that this would have been my choice of career because like you, you know, I love working with my hands. I love the idea of construction. And so I had at one point uh, my own, I'm going to do air quotes, construction company here in California. And I do air quotes because <laughs> on paper, I was a contractor. But as you know, the California State License Board said, well, if you ain't took the test and got the license, then you're not. <laughs> so that was, that's what happened to me, man. I started off in, in the construction, love working with my hands, man, building, putting things together. Um, and then I had to go through this process because the IRS sent me a letter. And it, it was just the most interesting time as far as my dealings with the IRS, man. It took me over a year and a half to really get things resolved. Ended up owing lots of money, bunch of letters. It, it was just a, a, a nightmare. So at the end of it all, you know, I, I told my wife, I said, you know what? Never again. I will learn to do this myself before I go through this again. And when I, I, I took the course, dedicated my time to it, man, and, and it really just changed my perspective of everything as far as business. Cause I've always loved entrepreneurship. Even before I got into my own construction company, man, I've always had the passion of entrepreneurship. I can remember being uh, a, a little kid, man. I think I was maybe around six or eight. We had just got back from magic mountain and my parents wouldn't pick me up. You know, I don't know why they, they wouldn't hold me. They wouldn't carry me around, you know, this big amusement park. So I was upset. I wanted to be picked up. So when I got home, I immediately drew up some plans to create these uh, type of strollers. And my favorite cartoon at the time was the Flintstones. And I hope I'm not dating myself by saying that. But and I, and, and I drew up the uh, um, kind of like, like plans or blueprints to design some strollers that would be based off the characters in the Flintstones that would be easy for the parents to actually transport their kids around these amusement parks. So my passion for entrepreneurship has been there for a while, man. But on when I got into taxation, it was like, wow, there's a whole lot of things that we as entrepreneurs really didn't know about. And the reason I say that because if the goal is to make money, it's also important to save that money because if we make it and not saving it, then we're right back in the situation where we started from. And to, to, to get behind the scene financially and see how many ways that there are to save money that no one uh, told us about, man, it, it was, it was a done deal. I'm like, I, I love this. And then I just started teaching it, you know, cause I love that even more. Cause when every time somebody would sit down with me, I was like, man, did you, did you know about this? And they would no, I, I didn't. Like, no, no, really? Nobody's told you this? Oh, man, let me tell you this. And they, and next thing you know, I'm just teaching it to everybody, man, because I think that's just uh, part of my passion. This, some things just need to be known, you know, for free, right? I get people want to make you pay for everything, but some things just need to be known. So, so that's, that's pretty much how, how I ended up being at, you know, uh, the, the uh, self-employed tax mm -hmm. guy. So, yeah. And then now you do this full time, right? Are you full yes. time with this? Yes, full time with this now, man, which is which is very interesting because taxes is obviously from January through April. That is the right. bulk of it. But um, like I said, taxes is a year round thing. You know, you got your sales tax. You have to worry about a use tax, quarterly estimated taxes, making sure that your P&L, your profit and loss is balancing. I mean, it is a year round thing if you want to really be seen as a legitimate business and you really want to be able to fund the lifestyle that you want. It's a year round thing. So you're saying that we, we have, it's a, it's a constant following. Is it a constant following or just a constant, I guess, uh, um, what is it? Uh, uh, maybe not a constant following. Is it a constant submittal to our tax guy that, that kind of filters through those numbers and kind of, 
categorize things or what what are we talking about when you say it's a year round thing? Um, not necessarily a constant filing, but I like the term that you use when you said a constant submittal. You definitely want to uh, have constant communication with your your tax professional, uh, even on a quarterly basis. I mean, okay, let me not stay. Let me back up. You, I suggest that you do that. But if you don't have that kind of relationship with your tax professional, and that's, and, and that's often with a lot of people, and that's okay. But even if you don't, you as an individual should still be involved with your taxes, at least at a minimum on a quarterly basis. Mm. You know, some people think taxes, oh, I'm going to just get it ready at the end of the year, do what I got to do between that January and April period, and that's that. But the problem with that is if you're spending something now, here we are in February as the recording of this video, by the time December comes, you don't know what you spent that on. Right. And a lot of people are like, well, because I don't know, I'm just going to put it to the side. And then you know how many put to the sides right. that adds up. Right. And now you've missed out on, you know, savings, deductions and everything. So right. to me, taxes need to be a constant thing. Uh, like, like we just talked about in the video I did with uh, Keela from Little Fisher County. We talked about the financial Fridays. Every Friday, sit down, go over your books mark everything, track it, make sure that everything is matching, make sure your book's balanced, reconcile your checking book. That 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 keeps you uh, in shape. It keeps you fit, right. at least financially. Right, right. You know, um, um, I, I find in construction, we we come up with a lot of excuses because we like working with our hands. Right. The admin part of it, we run from it, man. <laughs> we, we, and it's probably the average entrepreneur. I'm not sure, but like, like even doing regular paperwork, well, tax is not even nowhere near our thought right. process, but uh, just regular paperwork and, and trying to manage this, uh, especially in the beginning by ourselves, is just overwhelming, you know? Uh, but that's what brings me to this first question to you is, um, is, it, uh, is it okay for us as, as entrepreneurs to uh, to use a uh, tax software, you know, to do our taxes because I think that's what we that's what we normally do. We try to figure <laughs> out probably the cheapest way, and then, you know, a lot of times I think we use this tax software because we're embarrassed by the numbers, right? Mm. Right. We we we're embarrassed by the the uh, 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 um, how we haven't been organized, right? You know, by right. the lack of information that we did not document, right? Right. So, so is it, it it's it, it is it okay to, to go for that 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 tax software as a small business? Yeah, by all means, man. I'm I'm gonna say yes to that. Uh, but but then I'm a, I'm a circle back around on some of the things you said, being embarrassed by the fact that we didn't have our numbers, and even maybe fearful mm -hmm. of the fact that what the result may be. And and that's the reason why I say again by doing it consistently, right? So even if you use a uh, prepare or you use software, you need to know what's happening within your business. I understand. Trust me, again, I, I got my construction hat on because I'm representing the industry because that that was me not too long ago. Um, it, it's real important that we still know what's happening in our business. You know, the software, again, yes, I'm, I'm hands down. You can use it. It's, it's, it's wonderful. They have algorithms that, that do a lot of things there. But here's the thing about software. It's only as good as the information that you put into it. Mm. If you put bad information into it, you're going to get bad results spit out of it. So that's why still you can use it, but beforehand make sure that you carve out some sort of time to really sit down and go over your books right it's like you know the we always say the only thing to fear is fear itself mm -hmm. to me the best way to get over fear is to face the thing you fear and sit down have a conversation with it look at it stare it down man up with it, you know whatever and if that's your finances then do the same thing if you got piles of paperwork all over the place then face that, sit down, take some time, carve it out, block out of time, you know, invoice yourself, 
right? <laughs> you know, put 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 yourself on like a a, a, a project or something like this is going to be the right. next project, right? right? I'm going to sit down and we are going to go through this paperwork, sort everything out so we can be organized going forward. Doing that, I'm guarantee you when you hit the software, you'll be better much prepared to save money, uh, to, to be, like I said, to be as close to that perfect tax return as possible, to be much more organized. Because yes, I know it's, I, I can only speak for the construction industry because that's the industry I come from. Yeah, when it comes to administration, that'll get done when the project get done, you know? <laughs> You're right. The project exactly. may take months, years to complete. <laughs> so <laughs> we're we not worried about the paperwork and the invoices and everything. As long as, as, long as we can physically see that the, the, the project is coming along right, then that means the paperwork is doing right, <laughs> you know? But <laughs> we right. need to make sure that we are at least, like, I mean, there's a very trust, but verify. Yes, trust that the, the system is good. Trust that the software is doing good, but be able to verify it at the same time. So, so definitely, uh, yes. I, I think you're right in that. And, um, and I'm going to add to that because as, as construction entrepreneurs are just entrepreneurs, period, I think when we when we go about to do this you know this this tax thing or this documentation thing with taxes right right one thing we got messed up and i i know i also had it messed up is categorizing things mm. right okay Putting yeah things yeah. in a certain category and 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 i think a lot of times we just hope it goes into that category. <laughs> and when we, when, we, when we give out a report to someone, right, we spit mm -hmm. out a report from a, a QuickBooks or Zero, whatever accounting software we got, mm -hmm. no one really questions it. No one really, unless it looks kind of a little, little wonky here or there, but that's it, you know, unless you got someone that's, that's regularly going through your books to actually say, hey, man, what is this for? Right. Hey, Hey, right. I don't even know. I don't identify this. What is this for? You know? Right. But, um, but that leads me to the next thing is that as small business owners, we think everything is a write-off. Tyrone? <laughs> oh, I know. We think <laughs> tool boxes. We take the truck, the gas. If the kids come to work with us, we writing them off too. Man, we are writing. The wife came to work for two days. <laughs> what is the... What, can we write off these 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 simple things as as construction entrepreneurs? You know, uh, excellent question, man. And and it's funny, you're absolutely right. But that, I think that's everybody, man. I think if if they charged us to breathe air, we would write that off because the 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 logic in it is I need air to breathe, and I need to breathe to do my job. Therefore, it needs to be written off. That is the logic with a lot of our deductions. Is the fact that you know what. I need to eat. I need, if I don't eat, I'm going to get sick. I can't work. Therefore, I need to write these meals off because I need that to do my job, right? Uh, that's pretty much what the logic is. And, 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 the, and I'm going to say this. I don't want to curb that logic because that's absolutely true. If it's needed and necessary to do your job, then, then by law, it is a, a deduction. Now, there are lim limitations and restrictions to that, but let me give two words. And, and, and I say this a lot, and you'll probably hear me say it in a lot of videos that I do. Two words. The first one is ordinary, and the second one is necessary. Hmm. If you are a business owner, you should have those two words just tatted somewhere. Like, if you plan on getting a tattoo sleeve, put ordinary and necessary, like, right there in the corner. <laughs> because those are the two things that uh, uh, must be met in order for it to be deductible. Okay. Is it an ordinary expense in your trade or business? And is it necessary to produce the income for that business? And the best example that I can use that I always use is take a kindergarten teacher. They can write off things, right? School books. Uh, they can write Play-Doh, uh, you know, pencils, crayons, you know, things like that. Right. But can they write off a flamethrower? No. 
It, it, what? It, no, it, no. Wait a minute. <laughs> if they use it for the class, right? I guess. Man, I, hey, if, they, if if my if my son tells me that his teacher is using the <laughs> flamethrower in that class, <laughs> we switch his schools. You know. <laughs> right, you right, know? right, right, but, right. Yeah, but so, so it has to be ordinary and necessary, or yes. Or ordinary again is a is a flamethrower an ordinary expense for no. a kindergarten teacher? No, so it, it most likely will be disallowed by the IRS. But at the same time, what if it was a school shop teacher? Oh right, okay. You know what I'm saying? So maybe you right. know because again they're dealing with those kind of tools. Then a flamethrower would 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 make perfect sense, right? To some degree. Right. I mean, I know building, it, shop. building a miniature one or, or right, exactly. Of some sort, exactly, you know? exactly. So right. you can kind of see where, where does it make sense for that individual to be able to write that off? Right. And if the okay. answer is yes, then by all means, write it off. Now, there are certain things that, 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 that people try to go way left field with that the IRS has now cut out and curbed because it's just been too many issues like, um, with the introduction of this new tax law that we're now operating under, entertainment is no longer available, right? Oh. So we used to be able to, now, now so meals are, they're, 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 there's a difference. People like to maybe, if I, I take my client out to eat. Huh? I heard meals got cut in half. No, meals have always been 50%. So if you spent $100 uh, taking somebody out, then they would only let you write off 50. Okay. Okay. But entertainment was always 100%. And entertainment was like if you took somebody to, you know, uh, you got them, uh, what they call them, them, them special seats above everybody at the Super Bowl, like when you in that. Uh, oh, like the box. The yeah, box. yeah, yeah. Like if you got box seats and box right. tickets, that's, those type of things are considered entertainment. Okay. You know, uh, tickets to the Grand Prix. If you're entertaining things, you know, buying your clients, stuff like that, that's no longer deductible. But taking a client out to eat, spending money on a meal, you still get to deduct half of that cost. Okay. You okay. know, so there are certain things that have to be mindful of. And then there's the famous, uh, I want to write off my gas. Right. And I'm like, you know. I seen you did a video on, on Instagram. You you posed a question, right? You said, yeah. can I, am I, ta my tank is on E, can I write this off? Right, right. Right. And, and, it's, and it's funny. You said category or something, right? Yeah, yeah, because when it comes to your vehicle, you have to choose. You're either going to write off the actual expense or use the standard mileage rate. You can't do both. And, do and that's what actual, gets a lot of... What's the actual expense, though? What's that, the, the, call, the monthly payments or something? What, what is that? The, well, the actual expense is like, just as, as the name implies, everything you've actually spent for oh, the wow. business. That makes Gas, sense. Yes. Wow. That's a good uh, way to break it down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's gas. That's your your uh, maintenance, repairs, tires. Um, I mean, anything that you actually spent is what's written off. However, it's not a hundred percent, and that's oh. what gets people a lot of uh, uh, tripped up a lot because you have to prorate it, especially if it's your personal vehicle. If it's your personal vehicle, you have to know your total mileage. Divide that by your business mileage, and that gives you a percentage. So let's say you did that calculation and you ended up with 30%. Then you can only deduct 30% of your actual cost. Wow. You know, versus sometimes the standard mileage rate always ends up being a lot better because you, at that point, you just take your business miles and multiply it by whatever that rate is for the year, right. and you get an expense. So I always tell people, do it both ways and see which one is going to give you the higher deduction. But, but you can only choose one. And the problem with that is, and I'm glad you mentioned it, because I, I want to make sure we let everybody know, the problem with that is people only keep their gas receipts. They don't track their mileage. So they don't even know which one is benefiting them because mm -hmm. they're not keeping both. So I, I encourage, you know, especially for contractors, because you guys do a lot of driving. Yeah. Yeah. From project to project to place to place, a lot of driving. If you're going to keep track of everything, also keep track of your mileage because you could be losing out on money keeping track of gas only. So can I sneak in that time? Can I do? Can I sneak in the time from the office to the house as well? 
or does it not matter? Because it does like, matter. It does. Say, it does. Okay. Okay. And, and and the reason it does is because the IRS does not allow uh, commuting, is what they call it. So from the home to the project for or for for the first project or from home to the main office, they don't consider that deductible because that's just commuting from home to here. But from from here to everywhere else, yes. Okay. So if I can say from A to B is no, but then from B to C, D, and every other letter down the alphabet, yes. Right, right. If that makes sense, yeah. Right, 10-4. Okay, that makes sense. That was a good little nugget there. Uh, and I love the way, what was the expense uh, analogy that you use? You say if it's, what'd you say? How'd you put that? I just said so much. You <laughs> said <laughs> I got to come back to that. That that was pretty good. It, 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 that was pretty good. All right. So another thing here. What is what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see, or just some of the common mistakes that you see with entrepreneurs dealing with their taxes? Man, the the number one thing is not tracking. I, if if I can categorize from one to to a hundred, one being the most important. If I can put. Uh, a, a, a very heavy emphasis on the number one thing, it would be not tracking their expenses. It, it, it really surprises me that how many people, when I say, okay, well, this is the income, what, you know, what did you spend? And the first thing they do is look up to the ceiling tiles, uh, you know, uh, about this amount. And I'm like, okay, Let's let's really go back through everything because I want you to think. So I I mean, I know I get irritated to some of my clients, but to me, it, it like 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 even today, man, I had a gentleman. Uh, he just I, I don't know. I spent X amount of dollars. I'm like, no, that's not gonna work. Let's really go through. Think about it. What did you do this day? What did you do that? I mean, and the end result was he went from owing money to getting at least a hundred dollars back because we I forced him to go through that process. Mm -hmm. But the fact that nobody tracks their expenses and their guessing is to me the reason why people are leaving, leaving on average around $4,000 on the table every year without even knowing it. Wow. I and see. That's, it's scary. Because it, it, that's, just, that's just on average. It, for us, that's, that's really not tracking anything that has no idea at all. We could be a lot higher on that scale. Can yes, absolutely, absolutely, and I've seen it be a lot higher. Uh, another example, man, just happened to me last week. I had a gentleman who uh, owns a business, and he was he actually has you know independent contractors that he pays, but he gave me just a regular sheet of paper, and it was written down, and it had thirty thousand. And I'm like, you know, I'm always skeptical of even round numbers. And I'm like, is this a real number? You know, that just that just sounds too easy. Just to kind of, it's just like estimated, right? And so when we went back through everything and really went over every single payment, it, it was actually forty five and some change. And I'm like, do you realize that you almost just missed out on fifteen thousand dollars worth of deductions, just the net one instance alone, because there is no tracking process or uh, uh, anything involved, like everybody's just guessing. The only thing that we track is the money. And I get that, you know, money is important. Profit is important. But if we're losing the profit, <laughs> we're not even tracking though. We're, 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 we're part-time tracking, but right. this is the thing here. We part-time track, but we want full deductions. Yes, yes. I'm down now. That is one to quote for you. I like that one. Part time tracking, but we want full deductions. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that down somewhere. I like that one. Yeah. I might. I might get a shirt made on that one. Quit part time tracking and then start full. You know. I'm, <laughs> I like yeah. that. One. I mean, but that is true. Yeah. That is absolutely true. Okay. Without this tracking, without this tracking, and 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 trying to come up with something. Um, uh, could we be audited for, for not, you know, and I know it, it probably sounds like a, a foolish question, but no, no, you know, no, could we be audited? Could we actually be sought out because we're not keeping this tracking on receipts or paperwork documentation? Where are we at on that? 
Man, that 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 is an excellent question, and I want to make sure I word this without scaring nobody, because I don't know why people get get real nervous when it comes to being audited by the IRS. But can you be audited uh, audited audited for not tracking? I'm going to say it's possible, and the reason I say it's possible because if you're guessing at everything and doing this guessing process, we are inflating the numbers then it's possible that that inflation could trigger an audit, if that makes sense. Right. Not right the fact that, right. uh, uh, you know, the simple fact that you're not tracking it, that in itself is not going to cause the audit. Right. It's, it's right. the fact that because we didn't track, now we're guessing and we're overinflating numbers, that right there could cause an audit because on average, I do believe, um, if you're writing off more than 25% of your income, then the IRS is going to raise an eyebrow. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, are, are we, are those inflated numbers putting us over that threshold? Okay. And, you know, and, and, and even still, I don't think it causes an audit, but definitely not tracking everything would cause you to lose an audit. Wow. You know, because if you, even if you wrote off more than 25% of your income, now, now let me back up because here's the thing, the, the tax law has a provision for writing off more than you made. It's called a net operating loss. It's in this form 1045. It happens. It's, it's legal. It's, it's allowed to write off more than you've taken in. But here's the thing. If you cannot substantiate that, that's when it becomes a problem. I heard if you do that more than three times uh, uh, in a row consecutively that you get a flag. Yes. Now, now, understand that you get a flag, but you don't necessarily get an audit. Okay. okay. Right. Because if you, um, the IRS says this, that if you take losses, uh, two out of two times out of a five year period, then it's possible that your activity could be a hobby and not necessarily a business. Mm. Okay. And, 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 and that's what you don't, you don't want them to reclassify your business as a hobby because when they do that, all the income is taxable and only a small portion of the expenses are deductible if wow. they are more than your standard deduction. If it doesn't come up to more than your standard deduction, then you lose all the expenses altogether, but you still got to report all the income. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> exactly. <That is. laughs> so, so there's some of us out here think we're trying to play the system and, 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 and trying to claim zero and we could be actually inputting, uh, um, I guess the, the, I guess this this false numbers in this in, in a way into a system or giving it to our tax guy to actually put us on the wrong side of things. Right. To where not only we get audited or possibility of audit, but we can get flagged and get recategorized as a as a different type of business. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. Like I said, to me. Uh, you know, entrepreneurship is is difficult. One of my favorite uh, shirts, man, and, 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 and I wear it all the time, but it says, you know, success is hard, but being broke is harder. You know, and, 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 and I love it and I agree with that because entrepreneurship is a very uh, difficult thing to do. But at the same time, we want to to, to make sure that we – are classified you know it's it's okay to take losses and it's okay to take losses in three years and, and and the reason i said that you know success is hard being broke is harder because when you're trying to be success it may take six five seven ten years to make something happen i'm gonna raise my hand because that's me you know before i had the, the self-employed tax guy man i had action from square one and that was the business that I started with. That's the business that I wanted to, to help people under. I wanted to do that under that brand. But for five years, that brand did nothing. 
that brand made no income. That brand got me no gigs. That brand got me nothing. But uh, it, it, it wasn't until I switched to the self-employed tax guy is when things really started to develop. But for those years, even though I was actually trying, I was doing things, there was no revenue coming in. So I don't want nobody to think that, oh, I've already took a loss out of two years. I can't do it no more. No, you can't. And the IRS allows that. But if that happens, do be aware that they are going to uh, run you up against this, 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 the, the, these nine factors that they call the nine profit test factors. Wow. And they run you up against these things and be like, okay, if you're doing these things, we're going to say that, yes, you're a business and we're going to allow this loss as long as these things are met. And, it, and it's not even all nine. It may be one. Right. But there is a list of nine things that they measure the activity against. And as long as that is met, maybe you take a loss for 10 years if you want to, as, as long as you are actively pursuing profit right, right. so you know um yeah you, you touched my heart there when you was like man this this thing is this thing is not easy <laughs> oh it's, no 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 it's not it's not easy and, and you know um you know I, I always touch on this because it, it's very much a mental thing you know yes uh and you've got to have your mind right when you're taking on this journey yes this journey is no joke um, um, the 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 voices when it's quiet is is a battle, man. Um, yes. So so you 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 got to be strong in this, and yeah. and, and, and you got to have self motivation as well yes. as personal development. I mean, you need to hit it from all angles because uh, you know I was telling uh, some customers I have that's in San Diego, and they were like, um, they were like, hey Tyrone, um. Man, you know, you know, how, how you think we're doing, man? You think we're doing okay? You know, we got this over here, we got that we're dealing with. And I was like, um, there's more to come. <laughs> <laughs> that right there? Yeah. That ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. Okay. Yeah. And I, I don't know how to express that to you, how you can actually take it in and, and taste it. You know, like literally take it in because it just takes experience for some people to go through to realize, like, whoa, like right. that was a, that was a uh, was a wake up. Right. Um, and I told him, like, I, I don't know if you're actually gonna take it in because some people really don't take it seriously enough. Last year was the first time. Uh, last year I had a, a anxiety attack. Really? Didn't even know what it was, right? So I'm uh, uh, shaking, feeling weird. Nothing I can really pinpoint. And I uh, tell my wife how I'm feeling. And she was like, wow, you have an anxiety attack, you know? Wow. And I think um, what was sad about this is that um, at that point, I was able to identify something that I could have possibly been going through over all these years. Wow. Right? Because one thing we do is, as, as entrepreneurs is that, we ignore stress. Yeah. Oh man, it's that's we, <laughs> we do that like we do our books, right? We just push it to the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just something I, I I deal with it later. I deal with it later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we and we we don't even label. Sometimes we don't even label this stress. Right. That's true. We that's don't even true. put a label to it, and and then we go through all these feelings that we discount, that we 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 don't even acknowledge. Mm. And here it is. I went through a situation that I was probably been going through. I just literally, you know, just put off or, or, or didn't label it or, or, or didn't acknowledge it. I, and and, and, and that, in that moment, I was able to identify something. And then once I identified it, I was able to deal with it. You know, wow. now I'm now I'm making sure I don't put myself in positions to where I have to bring this on. Right, because right. I don't like that feeling. Right? right, I don't. I don't like early, so I don't right. drink to I to I have the right. early. Right, exactly. I, I don't exactly. like that. You know, so I make sure now in business that if I got questions about tax and and it's going to come back on me and feel, then I put it out. I, I put it in someone else's hands. Take care right. of it, man. There Look it at is. it. Get back to me. Okay, there it is. If I got worried about a job. I go dig in on it and I just try to because I don't like that feeling. It it, it I'm not in a good place when I got that feeling. That part. 
that part. Man, I'm so glad that you that you said that it did, that you acknowledged that because that is true. You know, we get uh think about I know a lot of people get anxiety when it comes to taxes because they don't reach out because they don't uh reach out early enough. They just make this decision and they be like I'm going to deal with it later, but when later comes, it's it's like the worst thing. Because right. they didn't prepare for it, man. So I'm so glad that you acknowledge that. And, and I hope those who are watching or listening, you know, we we can't do that no more. You know, that that is something that we have to stop doing because if we uh, let it go for too long, it will come back on us hard, hard. You know, I, I'm in bad. Like even, even today, my wife was like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah. But now that you mentioned it, I'm thinking, man, did, did, I, did, did I just do that? Did I really yeah. just push something off? That I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm a man. I'm a man up. I'm going to get right. over this. Right. You know, I'm, I'm a whoo. I'm going to shake it off my shoulders. Like, did I really just do that today? Like, should I be like, yeah, maybe I was a little stressed. She like, you look stressed out. I'm like, no, you know, it's just, it's just a lot going on. I, nothing I can handle. You know, I'm Tyrone. You know what I'm saying, yo? Uh, but, but, now, but now that you mention that, may, maybe I did put something off that I shouldn't have. So uh, I'm going to go back and revisit that myself. Yeah, appreciate that, you bringing that up. You know, it, it's, it's, and I'm going to touch on this again because this entrepreneur thing is, is serious. And, and for me, um, it's, a, it's now about labeling. You know, like, um, you know, like dealing with that anxiety, labeling it. Right. But also, too, when we when 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 we don't do these these taxes or this paperwork, labeling that, you know, that's a label. We're failing at that or 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 we need to get better at it. You know, there's a label that goes with that. Another thing I, I notice now is when I when I take a break, I need to take a break a break, a rest period, I used to look at breaks like I'm losing time. <laughs> I'm, dude, I'm, 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 I'm behind, I'm losing time, but I need it, but I'm losing time. Guilty, you know? guilty, man, I'm guilty. Yep, all right, Tyrone, you're making me feel guilty now, so. Uh... Well, I, and I started labeling <laughs> it as a rest period, man, as a, as I, okay. because I need a rest, I need rest like an athlete, right? Right, like, that's true. I need a rest so I can get back at this to be more productive. So I start labeling these breaks I'm taking as a rest period for me to get back and be more productive, man. That's good. I like that. I think I will change that. You know, it's funny. We Perception changes everything. Mm. You know, changing a simple label as you just did. Like, I'm not taking a break. I'm taking a rest period. That, that just reprograms your whole entire perspective. Right. right. So now you like, all right, now I deserve this. I need right. this. Right. Versus, versus I'm cheating myself because I'm taking a break. Ain't no, ain't no breaks in here. Boy, you better keep going. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I, I think you're right. You're right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that myself, man. Can I don't, y'all. You, you, that's what I see why Tyrone's, man. We, we, we come right. together. We just blow yeah. it in. Uh, boy, is it happening? <laughs> all right. So look. Give these give give us some okay. So if we're to do this on a on a quarterly basis, right? Mm -hmm. And a, as a small business owner, and I know it's kind of hard to like pinpoint it. And, and if you can't give a price point, that's fine. But but what if something like this would uh uh, uh would cost us to to have this type of relationship with our tax guy? You know, to where we're turning in things on a quarterly basis. Now, mind you. Of course, a lot of us need to get things in order, right? Right, right. Handing right. over, not a mess. But what are we looking at? You know, it, it, building, getting into building that relationship because I think it all it all boils down to to some petty, you know. You know, there there's many as far as pricing goes, man. Um, there it it you can go anywhere from maybe forty bucks an hour up to maybe 500 an hour, depending on what you bring to the individual, like what needs to be done with that individual. Of course, there's a lot of variables out there, but I'm going to say on, on average, man, if, 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 if you can afford to spend, say, maybe 250 bucks every, every quarter, which is uh, uh, every three months, then I think you'll, you should, should find out just fine. Right. Right. And I think every, I think, if you're doing work, you're making money, it's doable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just really just put it as part of, part of one of your expenses, one of the things you have to do in order to maintain your business. I agree. I agree. I agree. I, and I think that's what I'm going to start pushing out, too, as well. Um, um, 
for, uh oh, what happened there? Oh man, my apology. I don't know what happened. Things just went black for a minute, and I'm like, what, what, what happened? Was I talking too soon? Did, 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 did the two Tyrones come together? Did we really get the internet? Is, what? <laughs> Lord, <laughs> Lord Jesus, I tell you. Always something, you know, when you got too, too many powerful people in the room. You right? got too many, man. <laughs> hey, so let these people know where they can, uh, where they can follow you and reach you, man. Uh, they want to connect with you out there. Oh man, uh, uh, I'm 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 100 online, man. Uh, if you want to really come come connect with me, obviously go to YouTube. That's where I do a lot of the the information, a lot of the videos out there. YouTube.com forward slash the self employed tax guy. Make sure to check it out. Um, obviously, Facebook forward slash the self employed tax guy. Instagram the self employed tax guy. Twitter. And I think that's just pretty much it, man. I don't really do too much social media. I'm trying to hire my daughter since she, since she knows all that, but she don't want to work for daddy just yet. But uh, <laughs> as, as far as that goes, yes, man. I mean, always, if uh, if you have any comments, questions, you know, you can speak to this Tyrone right here. You know, we <laughs> always in communication, so I'll be more than happy to, to uh, uh, help answer questions that may come, you know. So that's, that's, that's where you can find me. I'm online. That's awesome. Now, hey, I need you to give my viewers something. What what is what is one thing you would tell them uh uh that can help them out immediately within the next 30 days that you feel uh that they can do? Really within the next 30 days, if yep, I can tell within them. Within a business, within a personal life, uh within motivation, um uh, it could be something that you have recently, you know, adopted, um, something you heard, you know, what, what would you get? What's one thing you would give these viewers out here to, uh, uh, to take hold of that, that takeaway? Uh, the takeaway really is, is, is my favorite quote. Success is hard, but being broke is harder, That's right? True. If, if 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 I can imprint that on anybody, that that that's key. Yes, as 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 both Tyrones has said during this conversation, this this entrepreneurial journey is a difficult one. It is not an impossible one. It right. is a difficult one. And but think about being broke though. How how hard is that? It is a lot harder than the journey that you own. So it's 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 even more imperative to stay successful and even go through those trenches, go through those ups and downs, because being broke is a lot more difficult. And to avoid being broke, track everything. <laughs> you know, if, if I'm gonna say take away with something, in with something, track everything. Because what you don't want to do is pay more than you need to. Yes, I understand. We love refunds. But when you are self-employed, getting a refund means that there's something seriously flawed in your finances. Mm. Because as if you are self-employed and you're tracking everything, you should know exactly what's coming in, exactly what's going out. And from that, you should know this is what I owe based on that amount. If you're paying too much and getting something back, then what's wrong? When you looked at that, why didn't you catch that, right? So, so there, we want to fix those fi our, uh, uh, financial flaws because we want to uh, have a, a, a very pristine tax return. You want to have your uh, end result be zero where you don't owe them nothing, they don't owe you nothing. Because if, if you get a refund, of four thousand dollars that means you simply gave them four thousand dollars and they gave it back to you at the end of the year you and i both know as a small business there's a lot more that we can do with four thousand dollars in our business throughout the year to help us generate forty thousand right you know what i'm saying so i encourage people to get your finances right just take an hour every Friday to start off with, to go through and look at everything, track it, write it down. It doesn't have to be fancy. Pen and paper works. 
you can grab a very uh, uh, some some real simple and have four columns, right? You want the time, the date, the location, and the purpose. That's it. That's all you got to mm. do in a pen and paper and then write that information down. But as long as you can go back to it when it's time to, you're good. That's mm. uh, just, just start with the most simple as like in construction. You got to lay the foundation first. Right. You, you, you cannot put the roof on a building that has not had the foundation built. Right. So start with the foundation, which is your finances, and then everything else will come along beautifully. Right. Just like your projects. <laughs> and there you have it. From the best yes. tax, from the best tax guy in California. Oh man, well that, that's a compliment coming from the best construction guy in California. Oh no, I'm not, I'm not up there yet. Man. <laughs> I'm just saying, hey, you know. All right, man. That that wraps it up right there. Okay. Yeah, man. Well, uh,